What's going on, good people? This is your boy, CDL Shouty. So look, man, I want to tell y'all something, right? This video is about how I was treated at a very popular trucking school in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right? It wasn't CL Driving School. It wasn't 160 Academy. If you guys look on my profile, you'll see. And I'll just go ahead and say Trans Tech. I was treated very unfairly and <clears throat> they were also trying to sweep up some under the rug racial issues that was said out of their mouths from an employee there to me. A racial slur was said. Only thing that was done about it was they wrote the man up, suspended him for three days. Let him come back to work. They called me in the office. Let me know that they were going to deal with it. <clears throat> that they don't um, condone it. Um, they even said, we're only going to suspend him for three days because we think that he's going to quit. And he never did. And his name is Tim. And if I'm not mistaken, he still works there till this day. Now, <clears throat> this all stems from the fact that I was helping another student. All right. So do you guys think it's fair when other instructors form a group, a group chat, and you're the only one that's left out of the group chat? Do y'all think that's fair? The only reason I found out about it is because one of the persons who I was very good friends with was in that group chat. And he let me know that one of the conversations of the group chat was about me. One of the instructors, he was a new guy. He asked me, this was like around 4.15, 4.30ish almost. He asked me if I can help a young lady that he's, he's having trouble with, if I can help her with her backing. I said, yeah, sure, no problem, no problem at all. Went outside, helped her with her back, and he stayed for about 30 minutes, then he left. Now school was from, I think, seven or eight, if I'm not mistaken, to 5.30 in the afternoon. <clears throat> he left at 5.30. My commitment and my passion is so deep for these students, I stayed and I helped her work on her backing. Now, I could see that they where they would have a problem from a standpoint of one male instructor and one female student working together. I can understand that. Okay, that's cool. But that ain't what the problem was. The problem was, and I was told by this individual named Tim, who's not even a supervisor, not a manager. He's not nothing. He was another instructor just like me. I was told that <clears throat> the student doesn't deserve extra time outside of school because that's not on their contract. These were his exact words. The racial slur he used at me was boy, and he called me boy three times. Now you guys know in the South, boy is cold word for the N word. Okay, cool. So with that being said, Brought it up to management. They said, okay, cool. We'll check it out. <clears throat> Got back. They suspended him for three days and wrote him up. But check this out, though. So I had a weekend class that I had all by myself, right? My weekend class, y'all know my students are my pride and joy, my passion. My weekend class, right? They, I was there all by myself. So Trans Tech started to do sneaky stuff. Like send other instructors there on the weekends to check up on me and stuff like that. Now, if you got a student, or if you got several students, 
the only way that they're going to be able to learn is if you have an instructor to stick with them through the duration of their class. See, what Transtech was doing was they was doing a lot of bait and switching. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> they didn't tell instructors when they first got hired that they would have to work weekends. They will wait till we get hired and then they will say, well, we need you to work this weekend. Then what they were doing was playing musical instructors. One weekend I work, one weekend someone else will work, and then another weekend another instructor will work. So the weekend classes always got jack legged. Now we had another instructor named Roger. He only did the weekends. But don't you guys think it'd be fair if they actually tried to put out an ad that said we only need weekend instructors? <clears throat> now, let's say, let's play devil's advocate and say they did that in the past. It didn't work. Well, bring it back. It might work again. You never know. Instead of baiting switching people. The failure rate for students on the weekend was high because each, even though we're teaching the same thing, it's not really the same thing. It's not coming from the same person. They didn't care. They considered themselves to be so high and mighty and proud of their name and their reputation that they've been in Charlotte and open for business for over several years. They think that they cannot fall. All right, well, I'll tell you what. The success rate for students that were on the weekend was not good at all. I've seen the numbers, I've seen the paperwork. So, I said, I'll tell you what. Y'all got this new school in Gastonia that just opened up. They didn't even have sense enough to put out ads for instructors for that location. They, they started... The first of all, they wasn't even prepared to open up that location. Then second of, the, second of all, they started pulling instructors from different locations to fill in. Instead of saying, hey, you know what? We're projecting to open in about six months. So let's go ahead and get the application process started. That way, when we do open up, we got instructors there. The building that they're in costs too much money. Too much money. When you have bad people in management, like a Mr. Jim Clay or Mr. Jackie Light. See, Jackie, Jackie was the, that was the, the, the baby boy of the crew, the good old boy crew. So he did whatever they told him to do. Now, if I'm management and I pride myself on being management and actually being a leader, do you think I'm going to leave every day between 3 and 3.30? I don't care if you got to go beat traffic. We all got to beat traffic. Or do you think I'm going to leave when my troops leave? I'm going to leave when my troops leave. I myself, I left early sometimes. You want to know why I left early? Because if I'm not, if management ain't going to take it serious and leadership ain't taking it serious, why should I? But I didn't always leave early. I left early when... I felt my students was called up. I felt my students was good. They felt good. But anyways, so the good old boy system, if you're black and you work at Trans Tech, you can, you're not getting ahead. You're not getting ahead. They don't promote black. They promote within that good old boy system. If you don't believe me, ask anybody that worked there. Um, but back to me in the weekend. So I said, you know what? Fine. I like taking stick shift. First of all, they took all the stick shift trucks and put them in Gastonia, by the way. They didn't tell the students either. They didn't tell the students and they didn't tell us, the instructors. They just did it overnight. After I was promised that I was going to be the lead instructor, mainly for stick shifts. And the reason why I wanted that is because I seen how other instructors... We're not taking the stick shift seriously. I take it seriously. So I said, you know what? I tell you what, since y'all having a hard time getting people to come up to Gastonia, I said, I tell you what. 
Let me come up there and stick with the stick shift. They said, okay, cool. They said, how you feel about doing weekends? I said, you know what? I like it, but it'd be my own class. I like it. I'll do, the, I'll do the weekends, all of them. I got so good at doing the weekends. Had a high success rate. None of my students have failed. In the three years I've had teaching, I've only had one student fail. One. And that's only because his name was John. It's only because he forgot to flip the switch down when he did uh when he when he came to a complete stop. So he went back to third, but the switch was up, so he was really in one, two, let's see, one, two, three, so six, seven. He was really in eight. So <clears throat> they start doing a little sneaky stuff. They started sending other instructors around to check on me, people I never met on the weekends to see if I was there. All the students knew, like, hey, man, they, they trying to do some sneaky stuff to you. Tim, the guy that called me the racial slur, yeah, he came back to work, never quit. I got sick, went into the hospital. He took over my weekend class. And mind you, my weekend class had four black students and one white guy. Loved them all. Now, this is how messed up they did me. They didn't really, they put me in charge of the weekend class, but they didn't really show me how to do the hours and the paperwork correctly. Because, see, Trans Tech has a lot of paperwork because Trans Tech has been in trouble. They've been damn near close to being shut down by DOT because their paperwork is all jacked up across the board. It all goes down from David Slaughter all the way up the chain. Paperwork terrible. My paperwork was terrible because they didn't really teach me. They didn't teach me. Management should have taught me. All right, whatever. So I was in the hospital. Tim took over my class. I think I only had like a weekend or maybe two weekends left. Paperwork messed up. So they called me. Oh, your, your students aren't going to be able to test. We're going to have to get your paperwork together straight. Boom. Me and David Slaughter, we sat down. Help me out with my hours. Boom. Cool. Got it to where they can actually graduate either on time or uh, a weekend after their, their graduation date. But have to be pushed back. Okay, cool. Tell the students, yeah, they're upset. I'm upset. You know, I'm taking accountability. I should have been like more on it too. Uh, but I wasn't. We get everything straight paperwork wise. All the students had to do was come back for one extra weekend. I think they had to make up like 10 hours or something because you got to have 160 hours. Right? Um, Tim took over my class. Now, these are students, these are grown men. They got families, they married, they got wives, they got kids, all of that, right? But with that being said, if I tell you to get your CDL, you got to come back for one weekend. No, actually it was one day. It was a Sunday. You got to come back for one Sunday, just one Sunday for 10 hours. You gonna come back, right? Yeah, none of my students ever came back, so I actually pushed their date further back. I call them, cause Jackie called me while I'm in the hospital. Hey man, your students can't graduate. None of them showed up. What you mean none of them showed up? None of them showed up. All right, cool, whatever, Jack. I see the setup. I see the play. So I call each one of them. Oh no. Tim ain't say nothing. Else. He really didn't even talk to us. He was all nonchalant with us and everything. And when we left, he didn't say nothing to us about showing up the next day. Because Tim didn't intend to tell them nothing. These are grown men, five, that are waiting to get their CDL. Been waiting for two and a half months. Tim didn't intend to tell them nothing. These are how CDL schools will play you. These are how they'll treat you. That's why y'all need to watch out 
for the good old country boys, the good old boys. Y'all need to watch out how they treat you black men and black women. Still to this day, I don't know why Trans Tech is in operation because after that happened, they were doing, I saw how they were doing black students dirty and black instructors dirty. So then after that happened, right? They had a rule. First of all, there was a business park that we always go to. And then we couldn't go to the business park no more because somebody had ran over a bush or something like that. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I don't teach to just take students out on day one and throw them on the highway and teach them how to upshift and downshift on the highway. I don't do that. So what y'all need to do management is y'all need to be better prepared for this and y'all need to go find another business park. No, they didn't want to do that. They wanted me. They want all the other instructors to take a student that just came off the street, first time in CDL school, in a 10-speed truck. They wanted us to take these students out on the highway and teach them how to upshift and downshift on the highway. Jackie just, oh, he the best. Jack. Now, first of all, Jim Clay's a liar. Jim Clay Ben told me multiple times that I was the best CDL instructor that can teach manual. He want me to teach them. They like how I taught because I would take the students through Uptown Charlotte. I was the only instructor that did that. You know, Jim Clay, he fell in love with how I taught. Always said that he was going to take a ride with me and see how I teach and blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you, let me un, let me, let me, let me pull back the mask on this guy. <clears throat> he was the lead, lead operations manager. He's the one that I tell the story about the young lady, Pamela, <clears throat> who, um, they were letting students practice on the yard uh, in a, uh, um, in a, uh, automatic but then do the road test and the stick shit he didn't want to authorize all of that dirty business that was going on so when DOT showed up they, they panicked he wasn't there that day but they panicked and they threw Miss Pamela in a stick shift on the yard to teach her you know to let her do her backup her backup maneuvers this is her test she failed miserably. She couldn't retake her test for another month. And this was during Christmas, the holiday season. Then they then then they, they let her come back and do the um practice. But she didn't get good practice time because they had to fit her in because the way they start classes every Monday, they got a, a new class coming in every single Monday. So the words that were said to her that I heard was, yeah, you can come back. But we don't know if we're going to give you much practice time because we can't let you take away from the new students that's coming in. How fair do y'all think that is? This is under Jim Clay's leadership, by the way. So this is the dirty games they were playing, right? So when I decided to quit, they were trying to make me take students fresh on the road, teach them how to upshift, downshift. First of all, that's a liability because if those students get in an accident, guess what? That falls back on the instructor. And that goes back on my CDL. And I'm not about to mess my CDL up for you and nobody. Secondly, that makes the student nervous, which that will in turn make the instructor nervous. Not going to do it. So I told them not going to do it. They just... Jackie just, oh, I keep telling them it's unsafe. If I say it's unsafe or I'm unsafe, listen to me. They kept trying to make me do it. Then Jackie going to say, how's it unsafe? You're making it unsafe, blah, blah, blah. I talked to David Slaughter. David Slaughter was like, no, one day they shouldn't, they, they, they shouldn't even be in a business park. You know, this is like ridiculous. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Well, I tell you what, I'm not going to do it. I quit. First of all, Jackie was trying to undermine me because, you know, what white men do to black men when they feel like they're superior. 
They want to call you the wrong name or they want to mess up your name. So he could never really pronounce my name correctly. He would always say Avanta instead of Avante. So he texts me, Avanta, come to the office. I text him back, Avante, and I said, I'll be there in a minute. Went to the office, it's him and Jim Clay. We shut the door, we talk. I let him know, like, I don't feel safe. I'm not gonna do it. And basically I quit. And that's when you get to see Jim Clay's real self. I was telling him about the curriculum, how it's too fast paced. You know, students need to relax, blah, blah, blah. You know, <clears throat> and this is all feedback I'm getting from students. They don't listen to the students. So with that being said, that's when he starts to cuss at me. I don't give a D.A.M. what you think. I don't care what you far as I'm concerned, your opinion doesn't even matter, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, well, you you trust me with the stick shift. You brought me up here. You um, you said I was the best. Then that's when he looks and says, no, that man right there, Jackie Light, is the best. And I said, you a lie. You a lie. You've been told me I was the best. Even the students would say I was the best. Come on, man. Don't play me like that. I got names of students that walked up to you and said I was the best. <clears throat> so... Basically, they just didn't care. They don't. They didn't care about the student, and they didn't care about the black uh, instructor. Because the first thing that Jackie, not Jackie, but uh, what's the name said, uh, uh, um, Jim Clay said was when I got in that room that day. He said, "When did why, why is why is all this? It's made, it's like kind of like I'm rocking the boat. It was like." What, 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 what is going on? When did all this start happening? Did this all this start happening when that situation happened? I'm like, what? So now it's like they trying to get rid of the black man because they didn't get rid of the, of the white man. So, with that being said, hey man, watch out for trans tech if you're a black student. If you're a black instructor, watch out for them. Their equipment is terrible. They never will replace those trucks. They had me go out on the road one weekend with my students. After they replaced one of the tires that we've been begging for them to replace anyway. I did a full pre-trip with my student. Got all the way across town for a break. <clears throat> and guess what? The damn lug nut is falling off of the truck. Jim Clay, instead of taking ownership and saying, dang, you know what? We need to make sure that our mechanics are, are on this. He blames me, the instructor. Okay. Okay. They never would have replaced the needle, the fuel gauge needle in the truck. So we ran out of fuel one day. I'm stuck on the side of the road with students. They going to tell me you need to start carrying a stick and checking the tank with a stick instead of Instead of replacing the fuel gauge, these are what this is what they say to us. Trucks never got cleaned out. Trucks was nasty. Trucks was dirty. They were falling apart, and they getting boo cool amounts of money. Boo cool amounts of money. The places, the Charlotte location, building the 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 roof is falling in. The roof is falling in. The toilet broke one day, and they getting boo cool amounts of money. They promised all of the instructors a raise, then turned around and took that money for, and put it on the trailers for advertisement, lied to us. Then Jim Clay put, put a, a, a guy named Shane Cooper, who's a racist, um, uh, uh, in management over other people of African, African American descent that, that were more than worthy to have that position. Shane screwing up left and right. Jim always getting called to Charlotte to fix Shane's mistakes. Oh, yeah, by the way, Jim Clay and Jackie Light ain't there no more anyway. I think that's the biggest joke in history. But I'm not making light of it. I'm just bringing awareness. 
to just say, hey, beware and stay away from trans tech. They do not have your best interests at heart. They do not have your best interests at heart. If y'all really love me and y'all love CDL Shorty and y'all know I tell the truth, then guess what? Do CDL Shorty a favor and stay away from trans tech. Go to other schools that are in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. I love y'all. And hey, thank y'all for trucking with me. This is my truth. And I didn't tell not one lie.